Yo, what's going on snipers and welcome back to our 1998-99 Colorado Avalanche franchise mode here in NHL 19. So in last episode we made a trade at the deadline acquiring from the New York Islanders Mike Watt and he is now slotted in on our fourth line and it makes our team almost a little tiny bit stronger. Unfortunately, we did have an injury to end the last episode, which was to Theo Fleury, so he's going to miss a couple games here in the first round. So, Sean Poden, who is normally a depth guy, is in on the fourth line, and Claude Lemieux is now up to the top line. Um, so, as you can see, yeah, he's injured for, I think it's like, till like, maybe for like a week or so. It's not too long term, so hopefully we get him back as soon as possible. Otherwise, we're up here in the first round of the playoffs, taking on the Phoenix Coyotes, who had a really, like, interesting record during the regular season. They went 31-35-16, and 16, basically. Um, so the, a lot of their overtime, uh, or what is it, their ties, gave them points that helped them uh, get to the playoffs. Like, without those ties, I don't think they would have made the playoffs. So, unless they would have won them. But anyways, I'm going to show you guys their roster again. I showed you it at the end of the last episode, but just in case you guys forget or you didn't actually catch last episode, I'll fill you in with what their lines look like. So as you can see on the top line, they have Keith Tuchuk, Jeremy Roenick, and Greg Adams. Uh, Keith Tuchuk led the league in goals this season, as you can see, with 34 goals and 76 points. He was a really good player. And then uh, Jeremy Roenick, I think, also had a solid season. Yeah, 69 points for him, so he had just as much as Joe Sackick did for us. And then also Greg Adams here on the right wing side, I think. Yeah, he also had a solid season, 66 points. This entire team is not too bad all around. Like, offensively, they have a pretty decent top nine. But the fourth line is really weak. And yeah, they also have Cody McLeod, who's not actually a player that came from the 98-99 season. Uh, I guess they signed him for like depth purposes. And then on defensively, they are actually pretty strong. Except for the top six is a little weak in comparison to us. As you can see, they got Darren Quint and J.J. Dano. Or Dano. Yeah, I always want to say Dan Dano because of Matthew Dan Dano, but... And then as you can see, their depth guys are all forwards, so if they have a defensive injury, they're going to have to probably put in a forward or call up somebody from their AHL affiliate down in Tucson. So I think we have the upper hand, obviously, because I, have, like, I just showed you guys our lines, but uh, we got a lot of good offensive players. Like our fourth line's a lot better than theirs. Our defensive core is a lot better. And then obviously we have the upper hand with Patrick Waugh, but... Uh, who knows, Nikolai Habibulin is known to be a really good playoff goaltender, especially like when he won the cup in 04 with the Lightning, so we don't know how he simulates, so let's see what happens here in game number one at the McNichols Sports Arena, where we won the cup back in 1996. Let's see if we could get a game, or a game one win here. First period, and oh man, that's not really what I expected. Patrick Waugh gives up two goals a minute apart, Daniel Breer and Jeremy Roenick. Make it 2 nothing. Shots are 11 apiece, but we are down by two goals. Let's see if we can bounce back here in the second. And no, we can't. Keith to Chuck makes it 3 nothing. So their big guys are firing. Like, despite us out shooting 21 to 18, they have a 3 nothing lead. And they're a period away from taking one of our home games, which is not a good sign. If we kill off a penalty there, come on, guys, at least get a goal to give your hopes for next game or something. Also, sorry if my voice sounds a little, like, husky, it's just because I've literally been, like, dealing with, like, a sinus cold the last, like, three or four days. Power play late, and we don't score on it, and we get shut out by Nikolai Habibulin. Like I said, he's a good playoff goaltender. He makes 34 saves for the shutout. So, as you can see, Daniel Breer scored, Ronick scored, and to Chuck. Yeah, the top line had two points each, so... We got to shut down their top line. I know they were really good during the regular season, and they're turning out to be good during the playoffs, but we got to stop them. And then, yeah, Habibu Bullen, 34 saves for the victory, so we got to find a way to solve him. Okay, so not a good first game. Even though we have a really good offensive core, it just did not show up in that first game. Hopefully, we get bounced back from it here in Game 2. If we don't, I might have to make some line changes. Not exactly sure what I want to do, maybe, but... Forsberg is the second line center instead and put somebody else up 
on the left wing, or it could be just because maybe our offense didn't show up because we didn't have Theo Fleury. Hopefully that's not the case, because if that is the case, um, and Theo Fleury does not come back before the end of this round, then we might be done for. So here you go, game number two, let's tie this series up, boys. Let's solve Heavy Bullen first period, and it's 3 nothing for us. So this is a very interesting series. Both teams have been, like, back and forth in a sense, because... They were really good last game, and now we're really good this game. So Claude Lemieux makes it one to nothing, and then Kamensky scores, and then Peter Forsberg scores and make it three nothing after one. Shots are fourteen to eleven in favor of your Avalanche. Second period, and Phoenix gets on the board. Rick Tockett beating Patrick Wall, but this is a pretty good defensive game so far for us. And we have a decent amount of offense. And Joe Sackick, the captain, Burnaby Joe, makes it 4-1. to Good job, Joe. There you go. Stefan Yell scores to make it 5-1. to Now we're playing like our offensive uh, capabilities. Or, I don't even know what I'm trying to say really, but whatever. Anyways, we're up 5-1. to And we are going to close out Phoenix and win game two by a score of 5-1. to So despite getting shut out in the first game... We solve Heavy Bullen five times. So Lemieux from Sakic and Forsberg. Kamensky from Hayduk and Denmarsh. Forsberg from Sakic and Lemieux. Sakic from Lemieux and Forsberg. And Yell from Drury and Ozelin. So that top line, getting it done. Three points each for all those guys. I think that line was a line in real life, if I'm not mistaken, which is kind of cool too. Um, obviously, once uh, Theo Fleury comes back, Lemieux's going to get demoted down to the second line, unless we want to play Fleury on the second line, which wouldn't be a bad idea, because we don't have morale on, so it's not like the players are going to lose morale because of ice time. So, really good second game, because our top guns showed up, and their top guns did not. Hopefully, we can continue that in Phoenix, as we're now at the America West Arena. I'm pretty sure at least that's what it was called back in those days. So here we go, game three. Let's just keep it up, boys. I know we're now on the road, but let's get a W if we can. First period, and it's 1-1. So now, after having two blown out first periods for each team, this is an even first period. Peter Forsberg gets our goal, and Jeremy Roenick scores for them. Shots are 14-11 to in favor of us. Second period, and it's still 1-1. So now we actually have a tight defensive game, so... Yeah, this is a really interesting series because it looks like it was going to be a really offensively based series, but now it's turning out to be really defensive. So we have maybe a series that might go all seven games, in my opinion, just based on how it's gone so far. Penalty kill. Come on, guys, kill that off. It's a long one, and we kill it off. And Stefan Yell scores to make it 2-1. to one. And Lefebvre makes it 3-1. to one. Good job, guys. This is a good third period. Two guys that don't really score that much, like Yell's like more of a bottom six defensive player, and then Sylvain Lefebvre doesn't score at all, I don't think. And there's an empty netter by Peter Forsberg, and Adam Foot adds one just to add like insult to injury, and we win 5-1, to one. so another good offensive game, especially in that third period. So Forsberg from Sakic, Yell from Lemieux and Sakic, Lefebvre from Drury and Denmarsh, Forsberg from Sakic, and foot from Lemieux and Ozelinch. So that top line still continuing to produce. Saki getting three assists. Forsberg with two goals. I think Lemieux actually had two assists as well. And Patrick Wall with a great 34 save performance. Okay, so hopefully we can continue this. In like We have five goals in back-to-back -back games. Like I said, our offense should be able to show up. So hopefully it continues this entire series. Joe Sakic already has six points in three games, so he's looking for, like, if he continues this in all playoffs, like, if we get to the cup finals, maybe this guy's a cons Smith finalist, unless he slows down. So here we go, game number four. This is a big game for Phoenix. They want to tie the series up going back to Colorado, obviously. But if we could take a stranglehold, that would be awesome. First period, and it's 2-2, two to two, so... Another really tight first period, Milan Hayduke scores early, Robert Reichel would tie it up, but then Dale Hunter, who's probably going to be in one of his last seasons because he's 38, 
uh, takes us the lead. But then two minutes or so later, Bob Corkum is going to tie the game at two. Shots are 14-8 to eight in favor of us. So Patrick was not having a great this game. Two goals on eight shots. Let's see if he could bounce back from that in the second. And yes, he can. Nice 2-2 two -two still. Shots are 27 to 14 in favor of us, so we got a shit ton of shots in that second period. Hopefully we could start converting here in the third. Third period underplay, can we score four goals in the third like we did last game? Penalty kill, yes we can kill it off, and Teppo Newman is going to give Phoenix the lead, but Hey Duke answers right back to tie it at three. Yeah, this is a back and forth game. Last eight minutes here of the third period. We're out shooting him still by quite a bit, and it's a 3-3 game. Are we going to overtime? Yes, we are here in game number four, a critical game for Phoenix, and it is going to be going to overtime. So, who will be the OT hero? If I had to predict, I wanted to be Joe Sackick for us, but I wouldn't really care who it was. And then for Phoenix, if Phoenix was to win, let's predict... Um, Let's just say Keith Carney out of random because I have not seen Carney do anything really in this series so far. So overtime underway. Who is going to be the hero power play for us? It's a long power play opportunity. Come on, boys. And we don't score on it. We got another power play. And once again, it's another long one, but we don't convert on it. We're almost at 50 shots, and there's a goal for Phoenix. And it's freaking Mike Sullivan, the Pittsburgh Penguins head coach. God damn. So despite having 45 shots on goal, we can't find that fourth goal, and it is a tie series headed back home. That really blows. So Hey Duke from Kamensky, Hunter from Watt in Potence. So Mike Watt picking up his first point with us in the playoffs. Uh, hey Duke from Deadmarsh and Kamensky. Okay, and Keith Carney actually had an assist on that OT winners. So I guess my prediction was kind of right. So Hey Duke had two goals in that game. He still gets first star. Okay, so I'm not going to change anything but the lines yet, because obviously we've still been pretty good at scoring goals. It's just a matter if if we could actually take the series lead here. And HL season's done, and Theo Fleury is back. So that is huge news going into this game where we could take the series lead and potentially eliminate Phoenix eventually. So Poden, you are out of the lineup. Theo Fleury, welcome back into the lineup. Which means Sean Donovan's down, Hayduke's down, and yeah, we'll put Theo Fleury back to the top line. And then also we got to take Lefebvre off this power play. Because I actually had Fleury. Yeah, I had Fleury slotted in as a defenseman on the power play because he's got a good shot. And Lefebvre is more of a defensive defenseman, so even though Lefebvre had one goal already in the series, I want to bring Fleury in and hopefully Fleury could produce. So that is good to go. Let's get into game number five. Back on home ice. Let's take the series lead if we can. And hopefully end the series in Phoenix. Because or else if we lose this game, we might lose in Phoenix. Because they might want to win on like on their home ice. So first period in a critical game. And it's one nothing for Phoenix. God damn it. Daniel Briere, who actually played for Colorado, I almost forgot about that for like a short bit, like in, I think, 13-14, or maybe it was a bit after that, 14-15, uh, just shortly after, he, like, before he retired, so that is one nothing for Phoenix after one, and we have only five shots after 20 minutes. Come on, guys, you gotta get more shots than this, this is a critical game, like I said, and your fans are counting on you. Second period, and it is two to one for Phoenix. So we got on the board, but Keith to Chuck also gets on the board for Phoenix, and they have a two to one lead. Heydu gets our goal, and it was shortly after to Chuck scored. So hopefully we could come back here in third. The shots are now kind of close, twenty two to seventeen. So we got a lot more shots in that period. Let's see if we can convert here early in the third, and yes, we can. And it's Adam Deadmarsh. But Jeremy Roenick gives Phoenix back the lead, goddammit. We can't do that, guys. We can't just tie the game up and then give up the lead again. Last 10 minutes of the third period. We need somebody to tie it. And Peter Forsberg, yes. The Super Swede ties it at three. Final five minutes here of this third period. Are we going to another OT situation? Yes, we are. So it's a 3-3 game. Shots are 30-26 to in favor of Phoenix. So we only had like four shots that period or... Maybe actually more than that. 
I don't know if we had 17 shots going into the third. I don't even know. But anyways, it's a 3-3 game. And we need somebody to be a hero here. So let's count on... Let's say Sandus Ozlin scores for us. Because why not give it to the Latvian. And then... Hmm. Who else? For Well, who for Phoenix? For Phoenix, let's say that uh, Keith Tuchuk scores. So come on, Sandus or anybody on our team. Penalty kill... This is a huge penalty kill, and we kill it off. Nicely done, guys. We're catching up in shots as well. Last 10 minutes of this first overtime period. And we're going to score, yes. And it's Theo Fleury in his first game back from injury. Gets the OT winner, and we win 4-3 to three on home ice. And we have a chance to end a series back in uh, Phoenix. So, um... Yeah, the, for some reason, when I uh, saw that Flurry scored, I just pictured in my head where uh, Theo Flurry scored, I think it was an OT goal in like the playoffs when he was with Calgary and he was sliding around on his knees. I just pictured that for some reason. Okay, so Hey Duke from Drury and Yell, so young guys coming through there. Deadmarsh from Gusarov, Forsberg from Flurry and Sakic, and Flurry from Forsberg and Sakic. So Forsberg and Sakic continuing to produce, and Flurry picks up two points in his first game back, and he gets first star honors. Forsberg gets second star, and JR the third. So we are a win away from the second round of the playoffs. Our top guns have been producing. Joe Sakic only has one goal, but he's got seven assists, so he's definitely been a pretty good playmaker. Even though in real life he was kind of a combination because he was a good goal scorer and a good passer. So let's see what happens here in game six. Can we take the series away from Phoenix and head into the second round of the playoffs? Here in year number one. First period and it's one nothing for us and it's the guy I predicted from last game. Sandus Ozlin scores. Shots are 14 to 6 in favor of us. Come on, guys, let's just keep this up here in a second. Just like shut it out, Patrick Waugh, and in offense and defense, just play good. Second period, and it's 3 to 1 for us. Bob Corkum ties it up at 1, but then Joe Sackick, who I only just said had one goal, now has two. He makes it a 2 to 1 game. And then with 17 seconds left in the second period, a big goal from Sylvain Lefebvre, who actually baptized his kid in the Stanley Cup, if I'm not mistaken, makes it a 3 to 1 game. Let's see what happens here in the third period. Can we just lock this down? Penalty kill. It's a long penalty kill, and we managed to kill it off. Final 10 minutes here of the third. Time is winding down. Last five minutes. Oh, a late goal from Dallas Drake pulls Phoenix within one. But we're going to hold them off three to two. And your Colorado, like as in what uh, Gary Thorne, I think, if Bill Clement would say, are off to the next round of the playoffs. Well, he, he would have said your Colorado Avalanche ought to stay in the Cope Champions or some shit like that. But anyways, we win three to two. Shots are 32 to 29 final as well. And we have taken out Phoenix in six games, which is the more important thing. Looks like there's a lot of fighting with uh, this uh, build I made, which is kind of funny. So the goals. So Sandus Ogeland from Drury and Watt. So Watt has two assists in the playoffs, so I'm happy with the addition of that because that's a fourth liner that's picking up those points. Um, Sackick from Flurry and Forsberg, so Flurry's still getting more points. And Lefebvre from Miller and Deadmarsh. So that late goal in the second proves to be the game winner. Three stars in this game. Bob Corkum gets first star with two points. Patrick Wall, the second star, 27 saves. And Sylvain Lefebvre with the game winning goal gets the third star. Okay, so now who are we going to face in the second round in a dangerous Western Conference? It's looking like either. I think we might either face like the Mighty Ducks, we might face uh, Dallas or Calgary, or Detroit or St. Louis technically, which is really scary because a lot of those teams are pretty good. Uh, Calgary not so much because Calgary actually didn't make the playoffs in 98-99, but the other teams are definitely scary. So let's see who we're up against in the next round and then we'll actually take a look at the player stats first. So in the next round of the playoffs, we are going to be facing... The Mighty Ducks of Anaheim. Okay, that's kind of cool. So that means we're going to be playing against like Korea and Solani, um, Guy Hebert, Frederick Olsen. 
yeah, that's going to be definitely a really cool round. Okay, so let's take a look at player stats, and then we'll take a look at the Mighty Ducks lines, just in case they acquired anybody during the regular season, which I don't think they did. Okay, so Joe Sackick, 9 points in 6 games. Good job, Burnaby. Good job, Captain. <laughs> uh, Forsberg, 8 points in 6 games. Not a surprise. Dead Marsh, 5 points in 6 games. Mew, 5 points. Hey Duke, Drury. Yeah, Hey Duke and Drury, the two young guys, 22 and three, 23 years old, both with 4 points. And then Yell, Flurry, who only played 2 games. Kamensky, Ozelinch had 3 points. Lefebvre, Watt, and yeah, that's it, had two points. And then Dale Hunter, Adam Foote, Sean Poden, Gusarov, Miller all have one point. So everybody on our team already has a point in the first round of the playoffs, except for Donovan and DeVries. So hopefully those guys contribute in the next round of the playoffs. And then goaltending-wise, Patrick Wall went 4-1-1 one, one with a 9.23 save percentage and a 2.17 goals against average. So that's pretty interesting. We're also going to take a look at the playoff tree quickly. Just because I'm going to to see who else is playing. So in the second round of the playoffs, we have Detroit and Dallas. So we might be, if we beat Mighty Ducks, the Mighty Ducks, we might be facing the actual 98-99 Stanley Cup champions or the defending Stanley Cup champions from 97-98 and 96-97. So... That's going to be interesting. And then in the East, there's the Flyers and the Penguins. So the Battle of Pennsylvania. So that's Yager. There's no Lemieux because he was actually retired technically at this stage. But anyways, there's Yager there, Straka. There's some good names for sure. And then the Flyers have an offensive core that's pretty good as well with like John LeClaire, Mark Recchi, Eric Lindros. So that's also pretty scary. And then also there is Toronto and Carolina. So... Carolina doesn't really have that much of huge like studs. They have Primo and Francis, and then they also have like Archer's Urbe. Toronto doesn't have really much as well, but they have really good depth. So that's kind of interesting. Hmm. I wonder what the Stanley Cup Finals is going to be like this year. Hopefully, an actual team that won a cup like in around that time wins one, and not some team like the Leafs, because the Leafs obviously never won a cup since like '67. So. Okay, so let's take a look at the Mighty Ducks of Anaheim's lines. It's kind of weird because I, even though I put their name as Anaheim Mighty Ducks, I put their abbreviation as MDA, so they're all the way down here. Okay, so here is their lineup. So on the first line here, we have Paul Correa, obviously a really good player. During the regular season, he had 75 points, so a very good player for sure, plus 17 uh, then you also have Marty McKinnis, so I guess they split up Ruchin because originally Ruchin was on the top line. But Marty McKinnis, how much points he had? 53 points. Solid player. And then Timo Solani had kind of an off season, like 57 points is not that much. Considering in real life, I think he had like over 100 points that season. Uh, second line, Thomas Sandstrom, who's pretty old. Steve Ruchin, who's pretty underrated. And Travis Green, who's actually the head coach of the Vancouver Canucks currently third line Jim McKenzie who's an enforcer Matt Cullen who I, I think he still currently plays in the NHL with Minnesota either way he's a still really good veteran yeah, in real life like now back in those days he this was like his second season maybe in the NHL maybe first then you also got Jeff Nielsen fourth line you got Paul Carey who isn't actually a player from 98-99 he was just another guy I guess that they had um, in free agency uh, there's also Ted Drury who is the brother of Chris Drury actually so we got the brothers playing against each other I didn't even think of that and anti Alto so based on their offensive core at least we have definitely the upper hand as you can see there's way too much 70s here in their lineup that uh, aren't that good in comparison to our bottom six defensively they got Ruslan Soleil the late Ruslan Soleil um, yeah he died in that uh, locomotive plane crash it was a really sad day when that happened. Uh, Frederick Olison, so yeah, pretty good top two pairing. And then Jason Marshall and Kevin Holler. Uh, this is more of a top six pairing, so it's kind of weak. And then, yeah, definitely a really top, a weak top six in Turnka and Pusher. So we got definitely the defensive upper hand as well. And then we do have the goaltending upper hand as well as Patrick Waugh definitely beats out Guy Hebert. And Dominic Roussel definitely gets beat out just slightly actually by uh, Craig Billington 
Scratch wise, they have Johan Davidson. Stu Grimson currently out with an injury, probably because he got into a big fight or something. And Ryan Carpenter, who also actually never played in 98 99. Because he would have been like only like 10 years old at that time or something like that. So yeah, that is the Mighty Ducks line. So hopefully we can beat those guys in next episode. Though we should be able to. And then if we do, we, like it's going to be a crazy conference finals if that is the case. So let me know what you guys think. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace.